Despite earning $600 million over the course of six years, Mike Tyson celebrated his 36th birthday with a bank account reading zero. So how did Mike Tyson go bankrupt? Well, Tyson made it clear that a financial education wasn't a part of his childhood. From a broke background, I never really learned the art of handling money as a kid. Which became a problem as he began to earn millions whilst he was still a teenager. After becoming champion at the age of only 20, Mike Tyson began to average seven 7.5 million per fight, and this didn't even include his other sources of income. He was paid over 50 million in casino deals, 3.5 million for a WrestleMania guest appearance, while Mike Tyson's Punch Out sold 2 million copies during its very first year. By 1990, Mike Tyson was credited as the highest paid athlete in the world, with an estimated 28.6 million in income this year, although all of this changed when he was sent to prison only two years later. Between 1992 and his release, in 1995, Mike Tyson was unable to earn a single dollar, although as summarized by this CBS article, he wasn't exactly struggling when he finally walked free. Most Indiana prisoners are given $75 in spending money to ease their transition back into society. Tyson needed no such help. The former heavyweight champion had two checks, each made out to him for $10 million. In the next few weeks, Tyson would get another $12 million for the rights to future fights and television. A few months later, he earned the most money ever given to a boxer, 25 million, to fight a stiff named Peter McNeely. Over the next two years, Tyson earned a further 140 million from five different fights, making him feel invincible. Money is a false sense of security. False sense of security. Nothing about it could be a you feel real. Invincible with money. Okay. You feel like you can't even die. Which, when combined with a bitterness from his time spent in prison, caused Tyson to begin spending everything. For me being poor, never having anything. For me being bitter, angry. For being in prison. It stems from a lot of things. Firstly, there were the cars. According to CBS, Tyson reportedly bought 110 cars either for himself or as gifts, one of which being a $320,000 Bentley Azua, the most expensive production car in the world. Tyson bought it and ordered four more. In the space of a few minutes, he had spent more than $1.5 million, while in a different instance, Tyson showed up at a car dealership just outside New York to buy another car. He bought a Ferrari for $300,000, declining a test drive because he already had one just like it. On a different day, Tyson was pulled over whilst driving his Rolls Royce without a license, but was able to get out of trouble by giving the car to the cop. You know, sir, why don't you just take the car? You know, you deserve it because you've been do doing a lot. Because I didn't want to get arrested. I didn't have license or anything. Right. And I didn't want my wife to get in trouble. I said, why don't you just take it? You know, maybe it, it was around... 230 at the time, and they took wow. it. This didn't end well for the officer. He got fired. <laughs> he did? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Although it did end well for Tyson's friend, Ed Lover, who was given a Bentley so he could drive home from a club. He goes, here, take the car. I'm like, okay. He gives me the Bentley. A month go by, I still have this car. He said, I wanted you to have that car. He said, I gave you that car. With so many vehicles, Tyson needed somewhere to store them, purchasing mansions in Las Vegas, Ohio, and Maryland. However, these were nothing compared to the house he bought in Connecticut. It featured 21 bedrooms and 35 bathrooms, as well as a full-blown nightclub, a movie theater, a mini casino, a squash court, and a fully specked out proper commercial gym. But this was only the inside. Outside, there was a full-size basketball court, a swimming pool with its own grotto, and get this, its own lake, lake house, and fountain on a 17.6 acre block. If the house looks familiar, it's because Tyson eventually sold it at 50 Cent, who called it his biggest financial mistake. What was the most like when you wasted money? The Tyson Crib was like that. Mainly because of how much the property cost to run. How much was the upkeep, uh, the guesstimate upkeep per was year? About 700000 A year. Tyson expanded on this in a different interview. It's going to cost him $25,000 just to mow the lawn. <laughs> right. right. Which, when combined with his other houses, meant gardening bills alone mounted to $100,000. Although the gardener was still a minor expense compared to the things Tyson bought for these houses. As a gift for his first wife, Robin Givens, Mike spent $2.2 million on a solid gold bathtub, which was followed by their divorce less than a year later, which cost Mike a further $10 million in legal fees and compensation. 
Nation. Tyson had also dropped 410,000 on a birthday party and 140,000 on two white Bengal tigers, which needed their own specialty enclosure, $200,000 a year worth of food, and their own animal trainer, which Mike hired at a cost of 125,000 a year. Mike also had to pay a friend 250,000 in compensation after they were bitten by one of the tigers, although there was another bite that cost Tyson even more. During a match in 1997, Evander Holyfield headbutted Tyson, who in retaliation bit a portion of Holyfield's ear off. Tyson was disqualified and fined $3 million, although it seemed he hadn't learned his lesson, as he then bite Lennox Lewis's leg during a press conference, warranting another $335,000 fine. In the process, Tyson employed over 200 different people, including chefs, chauffeurs, and bodyguards, the most pointless of which being a guy nicknamed Crocodile, whose sole function was to dress in fatigues and repeatedly shout guerrilla warfare at Tyson's news conferences, for which he was paid $300,000 in 1996. In another crazy instance, Tyson walked into a club and offered to pay for everybody's drinks all night. Mike calls me over again, Ed, come here. I go, what's up, Mike? Tell the DJ I got the bar until the club closed. I said, what are you talking about? I'm buying the bar out. Everybody can have whatever they want. However, there was one final expense that was higher than any other. Do you regret anything? Yeah, and no, I didn't pay taxes really. <laughs> That'll get you. Yeah. <laughs> it was revealed in 2003 that Tyson owed $13.4 million to the IRS, 117000 to five different states, as well as $4 million to British tax authorities, and things only got worse from here. Turns out most of Mike's luxury purchases were being made on credit, and as a result, he also owed owed $27 million to various different businesses, including $600,000 to a legal company, $500,000 to his finance manager, and $800,000 to a former trainer, all of which were stacked on top of a second divorce. Tyson owes money to at least 246 creditors, including the Internal Revenue Service, the Screen Actors Guild, and dozens of doctors, lawyers, and accountants. Tyson owes his ex-wife Monica Turner almost $9 million from their divorce, and he hasn't paid $19.4 million in taxes to the IRS, Great Britain, and five states, which was an extra large problem as Tyson was down to his last $1,250 in cash. Tyson, 38, said all of his houses have been sold or seized, and he owns only one car, albeit a white Hummer SUV, newly purchased and apparently not yet paid for. According to bank records Tyson's attorney submitted to the US bankruptcy court, Tyson earned $38 during January. His living expenses during that month were more than $407,000. Mike Tyson was completely and utterly screwed. However, he devised a plan to get himself out of trouble. Tyson's reorganization plan is ambitious. He hopes to earn at least $19.5 million from boxing over the next three years to help satisfy his creditors, although this isn't what would happen. In fact, he'd lose both of his next two professional fights before retiring from boxing and filing for bankruptcy. At the time, he'd state, my whole life has been a waste. I've been a failure. I just want to escape. I'm really embarrassed embarrassed with myself and my life. I want to be a missionary. I think I could do that while keeping my dignity without letting people know they chased me out of the country. I want to get this part of my life over as soon as possible. In this country, nothing good is going to come of me. I'm so stigmatized there is no way I can elevate myself. I'll never be happy. I believe I'll die alone. I would want it that way. I've been a loner all my life with my secrets and my pain. I'm really lost, but I'm trying to find myself. I'm a really sad, pathetic case. With nothing else to do, my Mike spent his days caring for 350 unique pigeons, a collection which prior to bankruptcy, he'd paid $400,000 for. He'd later liken his spending habits to a drug addiction. It's like the drugs. You might as well say you have it all, but it's still that empty hole that you're trying to fulfill. You spend as much as you can to try to get that satisfaction, fulfill that hole that just is is bottomless. However, Tyson's life wasn't finished yet. Losing everything had taught Tyson a valuable lesson. I know the power of humbleness now. How did you learn that? I have to lose everything. With humility acting as a baseline for him to rebuild his life, Tyson took the lessons he'd learnt and transformed them into a book, whilst his life story was also the perfect premise for his own documentary. On top of this, Mike landed a cameo role in both The Hangover 1 and 2, for which he was paid $300,000. Through these various media appearances, 
appearances, Mike was able to rebuy himself a pretty awesome house in Vegas, although he refused to let money dictate his happiness. Is there anybody that thinks a lot of money is going to make them happy? They never have a lot of money. Because it don't make you happy. Yeah, oh no, it's going to make you miserable. You said, well, it can. It can make you hate yourself. Since then, Mike has launched his own extremely successful podcast called Hotboxing and built a net worth of $10 million.